All right, uh, next is our part two of the HUD series. I think, yeah, part two, I think. Uh, I think I'll have one other part. Um, and essentially we now have a damage indicator, damage health bar, and, and it tells you how much health you have there, so health total. So, um, and we have these four here, are damage indicators, but we'll uh, cover those after our health bar here. Essentially what we have with our health bar is two, I made two flat planes, duplicated them, made the second one a little smaller so it wouldn't it wouldn't show at all, because um, uh, obviously it's red, so that's how much damage you have, and we're actually shrinking this one. So, first thing I did was I set the origin over on the far side here. You just tab into edit mode, select those two, and then it should be a little origin to select it, and then it should pop over right there. And you have to do that because you're creating an animation, and The animation is very simple. It's a scaling animation. When you're at frame 100, it's full, and as you go down to frame one, it's empty. So, it's very simple, and that allows us to say that you know, on frame 50, we're pretty much halfway done with the bar. So, it uh, works out fairly well there. Let's go back to our game logic. So, now that we have a health bar. We're also going to have something that damages us, so I added a extremely simple "quote unquote" AI. Not really. Um, it's just this blue box here, and it comes with AI.py. Um, this part, uh, for now, is is not really necessary. That's for the damage indicators we'll cover in a little bit. But for now, we're just importing random and you know HUD and all that. So, and then we're getting body box, which is our own player right there and then we're using a new thing we haven't covered before called raycast and raycast just is fairly simple it casts a ray from an object which in this case is that box own dot raycast and it's casting an array towards body box um then it's the next uh thing here is object from and we're just going to put none, and that just means it'll use the center of whatever is casting the ray, which is uh, that little AI box from the middle of the AI box where it's casting it. And then five is how many units, so it'll cast the ray up to five units anymore, and that's not going to cast a ray. And it's only going to cast a ray, well, it's only going to record a hit or whatever if the object that it hits has the, um, the property player. So I added player to the body box so and then the other three we don't use which is face x-ray and poly um, not really using that now let's so return object point normal I think at this point I'm only using obj so if it hits an object that has a criteria there um, it's going to print hit and it's going to draw a line from whatever object it hits to itself I probably could have done it the other way around but whatever this right here is for the damage indicators. So, um, player health, we're creating, um, or we're pulling it from our our dictionary, player health that we have already set up. Um, this is again for our damage indicators. Now, this ran damage is how much damage that cube is doing to us, and we're randomizing it from like I assume from zero to ten. I know ten is the maximum. And then we're storing that in our player health damage amount. So we're storing it in that dictionary. And we're changing player health hit to one, which is just saying, hey, we've been hit. All right, so now we're back in player move fire, our main thing here. And if player health hit equals one, um, then we're going to go to HUD update damage and then player health hit equals zero. So saying not hit again, um, resetting the hit counter. So. Essentially, um, I'm not sure. I might have been able to do this without going all the way back to player move fire. Um, I might have been able to do that all in AI.py. I'll have to look into that, see if it's better to do the way. Because right now it's spread across three different scripts, which seems like it should be easier to do. So, so essentially, that's just that's thrown at the end of our our player move uh, function. I'm going to go to HUD.py. And it's going to go if, let's see, all right, elf action equals damage and player health is greater than zero. Obviously, if you're, if you're already, 
um, dead, it's not gonna, you don't wanna do this, obviously. So we're gonna print damage, and then player health, current health equals player health, current health minus damage amount, obviously that's fairly simple. And then we're setting our health total text object, that text object that's right next to our health bar, we're setting that to our current health. Um, and then we're doing the play action the health bar action that we set up, the animation where it scales, and then we're doing the start frame and the end frame as the same, which is going to be our current health, which is why we had to do it from 0 to 100 or 1 to 100, so that when we um, when we take our current health, if it's like 58, if we have 58 health left, we're just going to move our our action to frame 58 and it'll it'll be perfect, so all the other stuff is standard boilerplate there. So, um, and that's fairly simple, um, and that's it, and that's how your health, your health bar works. Let's take a look at it in action. So we're going to hit play, and right now we're outside of five uh, blender units. We're going to walk in a little closer, and then you can see the um, laser flashing out saying, you know, hit, and then you can see our health bar as it went down. So obviously it went down fairly quickly because I didn't put a limit on how fast the thing can fire. So it's all randomized, you know, 60, 50, and then it's going to go down, down. And obviously it's at negative one right now. I'm going to have to work on those little bugs. But and you can see once it's down past that, I don't get any damage indicators. Nothing happens. Obviously now I should make my player die, but that seemed rather pointless at the time. So. So uh, that's the fairly simple and easy health bar. Now we're going to get onto the damage indicators, which is a little bit more difficult. So if we go to AI.py, let's go ahead and take another look at this. Um, so this is pretty much the few lines, uh, this one and these two here, um, that deal with our damage indicators. So we're running the get position um, function here and it returns two things what side is damaged on and what front if it's front or back was damaged on so it's fairly simple this part I did not write myself I had to post on the forums to get it figured out because that was the math was beyond me but I'll try and step you through what I do know of it um, essentially what I'm doing when I call this object obj and owner. So um, I am saying, uh, and since this is AI, it's running on the box. So I'm getting the relative to position array from the own, from the, the box to the object, which is um, the body box, obviously. Object is, is what we got from our raycast. So then we have directions forward, back, left, and right. I had to, their default, um, the default one they gave me had these in a different order and I had to change them around to get it to work, but <clears throat> then world transform equals relative to dot world transform, no idea. Um, obviously you're going to reverse it and um, reverse it times ray from dot world position. So it's taking the box and taking the world position and then timesing it by the reverse there. And forward equals directions transform dot x. Yeah, not sure about that. Alright. But anyway, it returns what side and what forward or back it is. And I, I take that damage side and damage front and I store that in player health damage location side damage location front. And then let's go back to our hud.py and you'll see here at the top we added this damage right is hudscene.objects damage indicator right that's that red bar on the right and then on the left top and bottom and if we go down here if player health damage location side equals right then we do damage right dot visible equals true um, and then we do an elif here because it could it'll be either right or left um, I'm going to do LF player health damage location side equals left damage dot damage left dot visible equals true, and if uh, and then we do another if statement here because it'll be it will have the front or back. So if it equals forward or if it equals back, we 
turn that on there as well. So, and then we have a separate action which is purge damage indicators. It just returns this damage timer to zero, which I'll show you in a second, and it makes all of those hidden. So let's go back to our previous, and then let's go to our player move fire. And I added a timer that put up to the top, I believe. Yeah, damage timer. And um, essentially that just uh, times out the damage indicators so that they don't stick up there for like, you know, 10, 12 minutes. I mean, it could keep going. So um, if the damage timer is greater than one, it, it sends HUD update purge damage indicator like we saw. And essentially that just runs this right here and turns all of them back off again. So, and once again, we'll show you. So as we walk, we see it's the front right. And then as we get behind us, the back one and the right one turn on and then back left. So it shows where the damage is coming from in a very visual, easy to understand way. And once again, once we, so as you can see, it's not perfect when you get kind of uh, in the middle, it kind of throws things off a little bit. As you can see the left, it shows the left there. It shows right there, but but yeah, it works fairly well overall, so I'm very happy with it. So that's pretty much the rundown on how to get the damage indicators and the health bar on there. Well, the health bar obviously needs a little bit of work so that it doesn't go below zero. Alright, until next time.